LeBron James is going to have a podcast. Um, that's that's great news because we hardly ever get to know what he's thinking about. <laughs> it's always a mystery with that guy. He's never sharing his thoughts. <laughs> what the fuck? How much more can this guy have to say about himself? Holy shit. Hooray. Like the shop isn't enough. Like all the other shows that he appears on isn't enough. After the media sucking his ass after every game isn't enough. After all the interviews by ESPN isn't enough. After his never-ending tweets aren't enough. As if we don't know what LeBron is thinking or what's on his mind. Oh, thank God. Thank God another platform for us to hear more from LeBron James, whom his fans say is humble. <laughs> Do you guys even know what that word means? Oh, geez. <sighs> oh, shit. There goes the camera. Well, let's keep going. I'm sorry for being gone, everybody. Um, I'm busy. This is not what I do, by the way. Um, it's important to me, and I appreciate those of you out there who follow the channel. But uh, this is just a passion project, so I have to be torn away sometimes. But it's impossible to keep up with this shit anyway. I mean, it's impossible. If I could pick one thing and focus on it and melt it down, but... <laughs> I mean, just today alone, I've got fucking Isaiah Thomas bitching like a real housewives of L.A. instead of a redeemed former professional athlete. We've got Stephen A. Smith continuing to babble his fake gospel and LeBron James as if having his own fucking show. <laughs> I mean, he's already got a fucking TV show. Uh, the entire media is his. Um, after every single game, every fucking dumb thing that comes out of his mouth, everyone knows about. He tweets constantly. Um, yeah, gee. Uh, can't wait to hear J.J. Reddick. How great are you, LeBron? As if we didn't already know how great you think you are. Thank God, a new platform for you to tell us how great you think you are. Oh, and speaking of platforms for people to be dumb fucks, why? I mean, I, I can't stand the fact that that fucking donkey Draymond Green has his own podcast. I Not just because of what a piece of shit he is, but because he is currently playing in the NBA. I don't think any of them should have podcasts because they clearly need to be focused on their craft. And if you have time for this podcast then you have too much fucking free time, motherfuckers, with your easy-ass job that none of you feel like you even need to go to, but you do have time for a podcast. But the fact that there are so many podcasts, and yes, I understand the irony with me here blabbering, me using YouTube to uh, give me a voice, but you got enough of these motherfuckers out there that every thought that crosses these guys' minds is going to, instead of just be like, well, you know, maybe I don't need to say that one. Nope, it's going to be said. Isaiah Thomas. Listen, Isaiah, uh, tough shit. I'm sure a lot of people have problems with a lot of things. I bet you Michael Jordan thinks people owe him an apology. But just ugh, the stupidity of coming on and telling the world this, I owed an apology. I mean, seriously, is this a bickering housewives television show? <sighs> no wonder. Oh, Christ. Uh, never mind. I just won't. But here's, here's what I haven't heard anyone say is him acting like the word asshole was where it crossed the line. Kind of like when LeBron got Draymond kicked out of the NBA finals because the word bitch was just something you don't say to someone. <laughs> okay. What if Michael Jordan had chosen to censor himself and say, no, I, I don't care for him and I, I don't respect him. Do you think Isaiah Thomas wouldn't still be butthurt 
I mean, we're going to pretend that it was the word asshole that crossed the line or just that he doesn't like that. Uh, someone said that they don't care for him on a very, very successful documentary. Look, Isaiah, I mean, I get the feeling that you are an asshole. I mean, I, ugh, he, he makes my skin crawl about the fakest motherfucker. Well, I mean, in a world of LeBron people, that's saying a lot, but yeah. Uh, if you're an asshole and someone thinks you're an asshole and it's a documentary, <laughs> Why wouldn't they say that you're an asshole <laughs> after that played? And no, I did not listen to the dream on green podcast. Um, I was probably listening to uncommon sense who was talking about it and he played the clip. Um, then while I'm jogging, Stephen A. Smith comes on. Does the guy have to talk as though everything coming out of his mouth is going to save the world? Just like he's a prophet with everything from the very moment that the cameras start rolling until 10 minutes later when he finally actually starts talking about sports. And you know he's about to shit on someone the second he starts telling you how much he loves the person and respects his person. And I love him like a brother. He's just the best person. I have the utmost respect for him, but who does Stephen A. Smith not love like a brother? And if you love everyone like a brother, then we no longer have any sort of a measuring stick to figure out whether or not you actually really care about and respect this person. So just, just stop saying it, Stephen A. You have made the words love and respect meaningless. Just, just leave it out of your fucking monologues because every goddamn monologue is the same we could be talking about fucking hitler and he's like i have all i have all the respect for hitler but i do not agree with this and then come broussard and rob parker have you noticed i wanted to mention this in a previous episode on the nick wright show which i can't watch anymore but when i did uh stomach it Broussard would kind of play the guy who was a little bit of a voice of reason while Nick was the just over the top absurd one. And on the Rob Parker show, uh, Broussard now gets soft and it's like, he's the LeBron guy and Parker is the other guy that is in my opinion, the voice of reason. I mean, if that doesn't tell you that this is just scripted entertainment, Oh no, you've got to take a counterpoint. Oh, you got to take a counterpoint on their show. So we have some drama to talk about, but, uh, having just ripped on Broussard, I got to say that I agreed with him more than Parker in this particular case, when talking about the warriors and Kevin Durant and again, fucking piece of walking dog shit, Draymond Green. Any opportunity to give praise, even if you don't even say that you're praising LeBron James, but anything to lift that uh, bullshit 2016 comeback. You know why that pisses me off so bad? That should have been a gentleman's sweep. I mean, the Cavs were just getting the fuck beat out of him. And then Bogut gets hurt, and then the refs start being absurd and everything changed. I mean, it, it fucked up history as history was supposed to go because LeBron was getting his fucking ass handed to him as it was back then. The East sucked ass, and by the time they faced somebody in the West, then they finally actually had real competition. And... LeBron's cakewalk in the East would get exposed and the Warriors were proving that. And then it all got fucked up. Do not fucking tell me that it was the superior play of LeBron James. I mean, yes, the Warriors did choke, but they also weren't allowed to play defense. <laughs> they also lost players. Kerr didn't do a very good coaching job. 
anyway, I didn't want to talk about 2016, but it's just amazing how LeBron can go out and every off season recruit as many people as he can, or that he can get the franchise to. And if another team retaliates by doing something similar, Oh, Oh, what are they doing? Many of you probably don't remember the super team, the super teams that they attempted and then disbanded in 2017 and 2018 on the Cavs. So really the Warriors were simply reacting like anyone who wants to win a competition would react. I should call it an anticipation more than a reaction, or I guess you're reacting to what LeBron has done in the past and anticipating that he's going to do it in the future, which is to go and load his team up as unfairly as possible, as unfairly as he can get away with. Now I'm not defending super teams. I'm saying that things got so far out of whack with allowing and making excuses for someone like LeBron James to form super teams. And then, and then for people to have the nerve to say that he didn't have any help after he formed super teams, that other teams were forced to follow suit. They're like, okay, well, if collusion is going to be allowed, if NBA rules are going to be allowed to be circumvented in order to form these teams, and yes, rules were broken. And rules were broken again with the Anthony Davis trade. This, this is what LeBron James has done to the fucking NBA. Well, you either stand back and let him form super team after super team that should, should absolutely dominate and should win every year. And he mount, managed to find a way to fail anyway. So everyone else is just supposed to be like, okay, well, we won't do it. At some point, you've got to go and look at your arsenal. You have to go and upgrade your gun. Once upon a time, sports was about taking a licking. You went into a fist fight, and sometimes the other guy gets the best of you, and you live to fight another day. But no, no, no. No, suddenly it became acceptable for people to show up to these fist fights with swords and machine guns. But that gives us an opportunity to look player by player at who the Warriors had and who the Cavs had. Because player to player, the Warriors were not a stacked team. You know, you added one person from outside of a drafted organization. You did one thing that LeBron James has done as his signature move for his career. (laughs) I mean, people reacted to KD joining the Warriors like it was so unfair that you would think that KD was the GOAT. You would think that everyone considered Kevin Durant to be the unconditional best player in the NBA. And it almost is like admitting that LeBron James wasn't the GOAT. Because if LeBron James was the GOAT, then the Warriors getting Kevin Durant would mean it was just closer to a fair fight. Because the other team still had the mighty LeBron James. Well, why shouldn't the Warriors add another player? It's not like they went out and got the GOAT. The GOAT was already on the other team, right? Just a refresher. You guys know that They went and tried to get Bogut. It didn't work out for them, but they added Bogut to the Cavs roster. You know, slimy bastards. They, they saw, they saw the damage that Bogut caused and they know that they probably would have lost if Bogut hadn't gone out. So LeBron James and the Cavs, the super recruiters went and got Bogut. Do you know, they had Chris Anderson who LeBron James must have loved from his time in Miami. Uh, Kyrie Irving outperformed Steph when it mattered. So Kyrie and Steph, that evens out. Um, LeBron James is supposed to be the GOAT. So how come LeBron James 
and KD matched at each other uh, isn't fair. You know, why doesn't that even out? And you guys pretend that Clay Thompson is some super player. Sorry, I beg to differ. Um, he's been said that he is, but let's pretend that he is. So what, you don't think having Kevin Love evens that out? They also had Kyle Korver, who just happened to be the best three-point shooter in the league at the time, but no, he didn't have any help. J.R. Smith was balling. You guys have don't remember history correctly if you forgot how scary of a dunker and a good three-point shooter J.R. Smith was. Um, I'm not sure how they uh, managed to just add J.R. Smith and Iman Schumpert. Um, Tristan Thompson. Darren Williams, you remember the whole Derek Rose and Darren Williams uh, experiment? And Richard Jefferson, bringing skill and experience. Richard Jefferson, who went to the finals on the Nets. So, pretending like the Warriors were like unfairly stacked against the Cavs is bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. That's LeBron James revisionist history. It's what that is. Oh, my bad. Uh, the Derrick Rose, uh, Isaiah Thomas, and Dwayne Wade added to the people I already mentioned was the experiment that happened the next season, which actually proves my point even more. Just every season is an attempt to load another super team. Shit, they had Jay Crowder that next year, too. They had Jose Calderon, Jordan Clarkson. Oh, and don't forget Kendrick Perkins. So from then on, Kendrick Perkins had no choice but to suck LeBron's dick in his second career. I got a harp on this supposed Warriors super team again because everyone that is supposedly the super team core, Draymond, Clay, and Steph, were all drafted by the Warriors. And not drafted the same year, drafted over time, and they built a winning squad, a winning program, a winning way of playing basketball. And the Warriors paid their dues. You know, trust me, as a Bay Area guy, uh, it was a lot of years of not much. And that's the key difference, you know. Teams put in their dues, they draft correctly, you finally get the right pieces, and you see what those pieces can do together. Not LeBron James. No, no, no. I want it now, and I want the franchises to give away everything they have, all their assets, and bring in whoever I want, all these mercenaries, and put together an unfairly stacked team so that it, I can have a chance to win. So the Warriors, after getting effed by the league went out and added one person. They went out and legally, by the way, went through a legal process, not like LeBron James's shady shit, and got another piece that fit very well. It was, quite frankly, it was the right thing to do, actually. I mean, I bought into this hype that, oh, that was kind of a cowardly move. It was kind of the right move. You added, you added the right piece to a drafted core. Can you even, how many of you, I mean, except for those who you, who really, really followed the Warriors, who else on the Warriors can you even name from then? Exactly. So don't tell me it was a super team. And two out of three of that core that was drafted, if you've sent them to other teams, they would fade into obscurity. So stop it. Yep. KD being added to that drafted core was not only the right move, but if KD and half the team hadn't gotten injured in 2019, they would have won again then. And if it weren't for the walking donkey Draymond and that injury, KD might have stayed and they probably would have won the next year. Let's also not forget that it was a gentleman's sweep. Okay? Okay. Even if the other team was stacked, you don't nearly get swept. Four to one. And let me read these scores. 113 to 91. 
113 to 91. You know, this isn't 2024, this is 2017, where that's still a legitimate blowout. Game two, 132 to 113. A legitimate blowout. Game three, Warriors 118 to Cavs 113. Not as bad of a beatdown. So the Cavs finally win one game, game four, and then the Warriors win game five. You know what LeBron, it's all about me, James did? He made sure that people remembered J.R. Smith and the timeout thing more than anything else. More than the fact that it was a gentleman's sweep. More than the fact that LeBron apparently didn't know they had a timeout either, and LeBron didn't call a timeout. I mean, the team, their team had possession of the ball. Why didn't LeBron call a timeout? Mr. Basketball IQ. He'd much rather just blame somebody. Sorry, people. That's not an unfair matchup. That's what someone does when you counter LeBron James's super moves. As far as KD selling out, hey, Oklahoma wasn't willing to do what they needed to do. I mean, it's not like he left Oklahoma in a heartbeat. And Oklahoma started to disband the crew. They weren't willing. And, you know, the Warriors pulled a miracle comeback to get past uh, Oklahoma. Otherwise, Oklahoma would have been in the finals. And you know what? Sometimes it's a rough road. You have a heartbreak like that. And you come back and you fight the next season, which is how you get these wonderful stories like we used to have in the past about the Bulls and the Pistons facing off and the Bulls couldn't get past the Pistons until X year. Well, and the Celtics and the Lakers going back and forth. But no, now, oh, if we don't have instant success, let's break it up and start over. I I don't blame Kevin Durant for leaving at all. Who the fuck wants to be in Oklahoma anyway? And as if there weren't enough bad podcasts out there with enough idiots being handed a microphone, don't you point at me, goddammit. Gilbert Arenas and Shannon Sharp team up. Oh, my God. Okay, so they pick up where Draymond and Isaiah Thomas left off. And, you know, I I think that 2016, trust me, it, it was very painful. And that was a terrible, terrible uh, collapse in the finals. And that is memorable. But to think that the Warriors wouldn't be remembered for anything except for that, when they'd already won prior to that year, when they won two more times after that, um, when they won again, I mean, that was the KD time, then they won again in 2022. Um, how about, you know, I hear people bitching that uh, the Warriors and uh, Steph ruined the game with the three-point shooting. So what, they're not going to be remembered for that? Uh, the small ball, you know, I mean, they changed. They changed things with the small ball, but no, the Warriors won't be remembered for that. The only thing they'll be remembered for is the 2016 collapse. I mean, it was bad. It was bad. But to say that they won't be remembered for any of the other things, I don't know about that one. One more thing that Draymond has said in this new career of his uh, with clutch sports uh, sucking on LeBron to try and diminish the Bulls and Jordan and lift LeBron. He had that quote that said, well, Jordan didn't beat the greatest team ever assembled. So he's referring to LeBron James, who managed to win with the help of the league and his uh, super stacked team against the 73 win Warriors but everybody talks about KD coming over as if it was the most unfair thing that ever happened so if you added KD to the team that was already 
really, really, really good. Isn't that the best team ever assembled? And LeBron James did not beat that team. In fact, he, he got spanked pretty good. <laughs> okay, everyone, that is going to do it. Uh, again, sorry that I've been gone. I just have to do other things. I did record a couple of other episodes. I just haven't had time to put them up. Um, and they're a little bit different, so they're up in the members section. I'm going to have you members uh, give me feedback on those. Please leave the feedback under those videos. Thank you. See you on the next one.